Mark chapter 12. We're in Mark's gospel, chapter 12. If you're visiting us today, uh, you're in for a treat because we've been on Mark, in, a gos- in, a, in a series on Mark's gospel for a long time. We, we're going chapter by chapter, verse by verse, dissecting every bit of scripture. Um, and we've been on this uh, series for over a year and a half. I mean, almost a year and a half, going through 12 chapters so far. And we're going to start in verse 28 today. Now, it's, it's by coincidence. I did not plan this. God planned this. But literally we go chapter by chapter, verse by verse every week. And we just pick up the next week where we left off. And it's just by coincidence today that today is Valentine's Day. If you, didn't, if you didn't remember in all that craziness that's going on, COVID and the Arctic blast and everything happening. But also today is this chapter, this portion is dealing about love. So I didn't plan this. This wasn't my game plan. It just happened. It landed on today. Awesome. I love it when God does that. That's awesome. I mean, that's, this, is, this is good stuff. So let's follow along. Mark 12, 28 through 34. It says, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Notice that Jesus had given, uh, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. Now, I'm going to pause right there. Have you ever walked in on some people debating, like arguing, and you're like, man, let me check out what they're, what are they talking about? Like you, you, get all, you get all gossiper or you get like all chismoso trying to get in metiche like some people would say. And you're just like, I'm just going to walk in on them and say, man, what are they talking about? Like what, what are they saying? So noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, verse 29, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. uh, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To him, lo- to, to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to them, you are not far from the kingdom of God, verse 34. And then from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. I, I, I'm going to talk to you today, if you're taking notes, um, the title simply is this, love is better. Love is better. I really believe that one of the concepts in scripture that God talks about a lot, that is found all through the Bible, is this theme of love, this this anthem of love, this message of love, one that God loved us. He loved us so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be with us, to die for us, to live on this earth, giving up his divinity and taking on humanity to be with us. He died for us and he gave his life for us. See, now Jesus, he loves us so much. He tells us and challenges us to love the world as well. Today is Valentine's Day. Anybody got plans today? You're like, some of you are like, man, you're grateful plans got canceled because um, money was a little low, budget was a little tight. Uh, you know, I'm like, man, thank God, you know, like, I, I, you know, we're just going to Netflix and chill tonight, cozy up, turn on, uh, you know, turn on a good movie, you know, man, make some abuelita chocolate, uh, you know, maybe you got your bread, maybe you got your pan dulce, you got it set up. Um, and, and, and you're like, man, I'm just going to, and some of you are single, and maybe, maybe you're just going to cozy up with your, with, with your, your blanket, you know, just, <laughs> God bless you as well. Some people are like, man, um, you, you, with, with your teddy bear, whatever you have at home, um, uh, maybe get one of those little Mr. Buddy or, or whatever pillow, my, my, my buddy pillows or whatever, um, you know, um, today's, we talk about love. The greatest love, people go crazy on Valentine's Day. For some people, Valentine's Day is stressful because it's like, man, you got to figure out roses. You got to, man, for guys, it's like crazy. It's like if you don't do nothing, it's like, it's like the end of the world, you know, and um, it, 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 you got to top it up every year. Like, you know, you got to go and, and reserve and do a video and, and it, it, it's like prom. You got to ask her out to Valentine's. It's 
as well. Like, you got to do a whole sign, everything. Uh, for some people, it, it, it's, it's a blessing. It's like, oh, man, thank God. I, I'm, I'm cool. It's single awareness day. It's awesome. I'm fine. For other people, um, uh, other people, it, it's, it, it's, it's kind of sad because maybe you've lost a loved one. I mean, um, I'm not talking about the one that got away. I'm talking about maybe you lost um, a death or something, someone you loved. And it's, it's sad for some people. But as most as we could talk about Valentine's, we talk about everything. I, I want to talk about God's love and what God has challenged us as the church to do, to love him and love people. Two things we got to do today. It's simple. Love God, love people. Simple as that. That is the mission of who we are as a church. Love God, love people. If you can't remember anything else, remember these two things. Love God, love people. We get to this moment, and as we talked about, we're in the last week of Jesus' life. And everybody wants to be inquisitive and ask Jesus questions. And they want to go up to Jesus and say, Jesus, uh, man, what, uh, what, what about this? What about that? Last week they were asking Jesus about marriage and death. And, and the week before, man, they were asking him about taxes. And they were asking him about different stuff. And you had the Pharisees that come up to him. The Herodians come up to him. Last week we talked about the Sadducees come up to him. It feels like every group of people is trying to trap Jesus. They're trying to get Jesus to say something he shouldn't say. And so now, the Bible tells us that a scribe, who would have been a theological scholar, someone who would literally know how to copy the Old Testament, he, would, he, he comes up to Jesus and he asks Jesus this question. He hears this, everybody talking, and he comes in. And there's a friendly dialogue with Jesus. This one's a little different. The tone of this guy is a little different because he just wants to know which commandment of God is fundamentally important, central to everything else. He just wants to know one basic answer. What's most important? He, Jesus answers him directly. The most important thing you could do, he, he says, is to love God. In Deuteronomy 6, 4, this is the command to the people of Israel to, come, to love God with everything. Love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and all your strength. This is the command to everyone as well. And over time, no matter what's happened before the law, after the law, and during the law, and even when Jesus fulfilled the law, this is still our command today is to love God with everything we got. And here today, if we're here listening to God today, we're listening to his word, we love God with everything we have. And because God is the one that set us free, because God is the one that's on the throne, God is the one that's in control, and we give God everything that we have, no matter what happens, no matter what people People say to us, God is the God that we serve, and I love him to death. No greater love do I have for anyone else. The only person I love is Jesus and God alone. It's him. I can love my wife. I can love my friends. I can love my children. I can love my parents. I can love chocolate. I can love candy. I can love food. I can love everything, but none of that love can compete with the love that I have for God. Anybody believe that today? God is challenging us to love him. Now for you, I, for me, I love Valentine's Day. Growing up, I never had a date, but I had candy. <laughs> I mean, I, and I would get a little card, I choo choo choose you, like, you know, you know, one of those, you know, like, I, I love writing those cards to everybody. I'm like, hey, what's up? Let me give you a kiss. You know, I'll slick, it was a Hershey's kiss. <laughs> Hugs, you know, and there's this love comp showing from one to another. But the love that we have for God goes beyond just writing a card. It's giving everything. I want to tell you, I'm going to show you how to love God today. Very simple things. He says, verse, it goes back to verse, verse 30. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, mind, and strength. There's four ways to love God. Number one, love God with your heart. With our heart. Our heart is our emotions. Our heart is, 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 is our, our interior part of our body. Our, our, it's, it's, it's the cognitive, or it comes down to it, our emotions. I mean, every breath that we take, every, every tear that we, we cry, every moment of desperation and sadness, we're loving God with our emotions. We come to God's presence, and, and some people wonder, why, why do you get emotional at the altar? Why do you get emotional? Because we know what it feels like to be without God. 
And because we love God so much that we're going to love him. And some people will cry at the altar. Some people will weep at the altar. Some people fall on their knees at the altar. Some people lift up their hands at the altar. Everybody expresses God. But the challenge for us today is that we love God with our heart and who we have, what we have inside of us. Just like we would love anyone else around us, we would cry for them. We would shed tears for them. Oh, man, we cry when, when, when artists die. We cry when, when, when our favorite celebrity dies. We cry cry when someone that we know dies. We, we cry before God because we weep with our emotions, with everything we got. We're not, we're created as human beings of emotion. I mean, have you ever met a person as emotionless? Like, you know someone already. <laughs> you know, you hit them, you tap them, and nothing happens. Like, you're trying to get them upset with you, and, and they're like, they're just, they're just very like, everything's cool. We're wired and geared to be motion, emotion, with emotion. We're geared to laugh. We're geared to cry. And for us today, the challenge for us is to give him our emotions, our heart. Love God with everything we have in our heart. Number two, our soul. Our soul is the inmost part of us. Our soul is what we believe is where we're going to spend eternity in heaven. The soul will last longer than the body. When the body is wasted away, the soul will remain. And the soul is the supernatural or it's a spiritual part of us that, that will remain long before or long after our body wastes away. That's the soul. And so when we love God with our soul, we let him into our innermost part of us, the part that no one sees, the part that everyone else, uh, it, 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 it hides from everyone else. It's the part that's going to be for all of eternity. And so when we, when we love God with our soul, we're loving God with all of our spirit, with all, everything that's in us. And the thing that's going to last after this body is dead, thank goodness that this body won't be alive in, in so many years, that I'm going to have a new body and I have a soul that's everlasting forever. And that's going to be with God. Number three, we love God with our mind. I'm going to spend another, an extra minute on this one. We love God with our mind, our intellect. God gave us a brain for a reason. It's our cognitive. It, it's, coming in, it, it, it's, it's coming into our, our thinking, our way of, of, of observing and, and perceiving things. We don't just love God out of emotion. We love God because we believe and we think. And we see how God does things, and we try to perceive it and try to educate ourselves on who God is. We de develop theologies. The word theology, people are scared of it, but theology literally means the study of God. We study who God is. We develop doctrines to describe God. That's all it is. It's just describing the very nature and the characters of God. We, we develop systematic theologies that, that describe and, and try to tell people these are the attributes of God throughout Scripture. We study the Bible. We read books. We read commentaries. We don't just believe whatever we see. No, no, we actually dive deep into God's word. And I challenge you, everything that I hear, you hear from me, study it for yourself and read it in your own time as well. We, we study for ourselves. We we when you love God with your mind, you're always a learner. You want to learn more about him. You want to read more of his scripture, recite passages, but not just recite on them, but meditate on his word. We're learners. We love him with our intellect. We, we study more. We, we keep growing, knowing more of him. Number four, love God with your strength. We love God with our strength. We give him everything we have. We put it into action. When we love God with our strength, God is talking about our body. Our body belongs to God. All the strength that we have, every breath that we have, our arms, our legs, every, every, every limb that we have today, it all belongs to God. Our mouth belongs to God. Our ears belong to God. Everything a part of us belongs to God. Uh, Corinthians tells us, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit that is in you? 
And for us as well, we have to remind ourselves that this body is God's and, and it belongs to him and we must take care of it and give it to him and honor God with our bodies. So before we give our body away to our boyfriend, our girlfriend, our husband, our wife, we, before we give our body away to someone else for a night, one night stand, we have to understand that this body is not our own to give away. This body belongs to God. Anybody hear me today? That this is his and his alone. And so when I love him with my strength, when I love him with all I got, I honor God in purity and integrity before marriage to God. And I say, God, this is yours. I wake up in the morning and I say, God, this is yours. I go to work. I labor. Whatever job you do and you use your hands, you use your feet. God gave you skills. To use your hands, maybe you build build something, maybe you're, you're a carpenter or a welder, whatever you do with your hands, music, anything you put your hands to, a typewriter or not a typewriter, a keyboard, you type something. You, go give, you love God with your body, your strength, everything you have. You come and serve church. And you say, God, I'm here to set up chairs. I'm here to do everything. I love God with everything I have. This is how we love God. With our heart, soul, mind, and strength, are you loving God today with your body? See, there are those who love God, but not with everything they have. See, there's people out there that like to love God. They serve God emotionally, but they commit intellectual suicide. What does that mean? Man, you come to the altar, you cry out to God, yes, Lord, and you give all of your emotions to God. But you never pick up your Bible or do anything to read or learn more about him. You're honoring God in one way, but you're not honoring God in other ways. You you wanna worship God in in, in song and you wanna worship God in dance and you wanna worship God lifting up your hands, but when it comes time to actually reading his scripture and studying his word, you know nothing about him. Some people serve God intellectually, but with no emotion, This this is the opposite. Like, they're smart people. I know some people that are really smart. I mean, they got more degrees than a thermometer. They're, they know books of the Bible. They, they know things forward and backwards. The biblical language is Greek and Hebrew. They know it intellectually. Some people will get that later. Okay. They, they know it intellectually. They can write books. But there's no emotion. They know the word. But it's an emotionless book for them. For us, the challenge is here. There's some people that serve God both emotionally and intellectually. They worship God. They, 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 they know the books. They know, they know the intellect. They love him with everything. But with no actual obedience requiring exercise of strength. There's people that will serve God emotionally and intellectually. They love him with everything except for when it comes time to serve and to give and to work with our bodies. They know nothing about it, and they know nothing about giving to God uh, more than the emotion or reading the Bible. They can, you, know, you can recite every scripture you want. You can sing every song you want. But if you don't know how to serve, are you really loving God? Are, if you don't know how to put your hands to work and to pick up a broom, pick up some chairs, are you really loving God with everything you have? If you're never telling people about Jesus, uh, are you really loving God with every one thing you have? Because if you, if you master these four areas of loving God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength, the next part is easier. Because when you love God with your heart, you're going to want to tell people about him. When you love God with your soul, you care about the eternity of other people. When you love God with your mind, oh, you want to be able to recite and describe Jesus in the best way possible. When you love God with your hands, with your strength, oh, you're going to get to action and work. Because there's two commandments today. Love God, love people. So he said, the second commandment, oh, he goes back to verse 31. It goes right here. He says, the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. I mean, the first one is one thing. Okay, I love God. I love everything. Oh, I love everything about you, God. I love you. There's always that guy at the Christian concert. I love you, Jesus. Like, love you, Lord. <laughs> you know, it gets all quiet and then everybody... It's that one person. I always wish that would be me, but no. It's love God. Love people. A lot of people at times we get the first one right, but if you really truly get the first one right, you'll get the second one right too. 
Love your neighbor as yourself. Because if you love God, you'll listen to what God says and you will do what God is asking you to do. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love God, love people. Love God, love people. More now than ever before in this COVID 2021 era that we live in, in an area and a nation with so much division, we need more love of other people, our neighbors, even when they don't look like us, even when they're not our race, our language, our place of origin. Maybe they don't serve our, our same political party. We have to love our neighbors. Even when we hate them, even when we want to hate on them, even when, when they hate us or disagree with what we disagree with, we have to love our neighbors and we, want, we need to forgive them. This is a time where, where, where it's so much, we, we, we publicize so much the idea of loving ourselves so much. But have you ever loved someone else as yourself? We live in a time period where it's about doing things yourself and, and individuality and serving to yourself and giving yourself stuff. I'm, I'm going to give my own self a Valentine present. I'm going to give my own self something. I'm going to bless myself today. You're, you're anxious about yourself. You, you love yourself. I mean, we, we're more lovers of self now. I mean, we got the selfie, you know, like, I mean, we, you know. I scrolled through some people. Some, man, some people really love themselves, you know. You, can, you, you know what someone loves when, you know, you scroll through their Instagram, you know. Like, for me, I got food and dogs and my wife, you know. Those are the three things, that's it, you know. And, you know, of course my wife is number one because she's in the room right now, you know. But my dogs are kind of close second, you know. And there's always food. I, I, man, amen. We can always, when all three happen at the same time, it's just, it's beautiful. Love your neighbor as yourself. What does it mean to love your neighbor as yourself? When we love our neighbors as ourselves, we put their needs before ours. We all got needs, we all got issues, we all got situations in our life, but when, when we really love someone, we put their needs before ours and we, we're sacrificing who we are and what our, our preferences for someone else's. If, if, if for those of you who are single or, or about to get married or just got married or, or, or you're, you're, you're kind of working on marriage or something like that right now, this is a part of love that, that really matters is you, you love and you serve each other. I'm going to tell you one of the biggest lies, and this is not even part of my notes, um, but one of the biggest lies I, I heard is this idea of uh, whenever I was getting married, they were, they were saying, and I told my wife this and she laughed, kind of like one of those laughs like, I don't know if I'm really laughing with you kind of thing. But one of those, one of those things that people say, would tell us, like, oh, George, remember, happy wife, happy life. Ever heard of that expression? And I'm just like, I don't know about that. You know, I mean, what? because in reality, the true love of expression is not me one serving the other. It's both serving each other and honoring God. And it's a happy wife, happy husband, honoring God before marriage and saying, God, I love you. It's not just one trying to please the other, one trying to outdo the other, one, one trying to be, do all of it. No, it's both of them serving each other because the best kind of love is when both come together and they can agree on some stuff. Even when we disagree on things, I love my wife so much that when we come together and we look at each other in the eye and we know this is God's will, God's plan for our life, and we see God working in our life. It's not just one serving the other. Because if, you just, if it's just going, if love is just going one way, is that really love? And Jesus loved us so much that he's not just demanding of love for us. He lets us love him, but he gave the love first. He loved us before we were even born. He died for us. And that's the true love. It's when the love is reciprocated on both sides, where it's not just one fighting for the other. No, it's, it's both fighting for, for honoring God. That's what love is. When we, we want to love your neighbor as yourself, want to love your spouse as yourself, man, put their needs before yours. Put, the, put your preferences aside. But you know what? It's more than just need. Put your problems aside. And you treat their problems as your problems. See, I always tell people this. There's a difference between apathy, sympathy, and empathy. There's three different words. You can write this down. Apathy, sympathy, and empathy. If you don't know what these words mean, we're going to get a dictionary today. George's version. Ap 
apathy means I don't care. Whatever you got going on, ah, I don't care. You do you, you know. Yo no sé tú, you know, what's up? <laughs> I don't care. Apathy. Sympathy. You've heard about sympathy. Oh, we got to sympathize with someone. We, we have sympathy for someone. Sympathy is kind of like pity. I see what you're going through, and I'm like, oh, man, that sucks. But there's a, a step further. Because there's apathy, I don't care. There's sympathy, I see you. But empathy is not, I don't only see you, but I'm with you. Empathy is not just, I see what you're going through, your problems, but I'm putting myself in your seat. I'm putting myself in your shoes. And the pain that you feel, I'm feeling it as well. You're crying, I'm crying. Oh, you're in tears, I'm in tears. You're on your knees crying before God. I'm on my knees crying before God. Your problems become my problems. I don't want to be a church that is a church of apathy. I don't want to be a church that even just has sympathy because that's just saying pity to other people. No, I want to be a church that has empathy for the lost and says, I know what you're feeling. I know that you've lost loved ones. I know this COVID hurts. I know you lost your job. I know, man, it's hard. I know it's not easy going through a divorce. I know it's not easy going through situations right now. I know it's tough, but you know what? Let me put myself in your shoes and whatever you're going through, good or bad, I'm with you, my friend. That's loving your neighbor as yourself. I have empathy for you. I empathize with you. I'm entering into your problem and I'm making it my problem. You can't pay the bills. You know what? Neither can I. Let's work on this together. You can't make this happen. You know what? Neither can I. And we're, we're working on it together. And it goes vice versa. When you're celebrating, I'm celebrating with you because you know what? When you, when you, it's one thing to love your neighbor when they're down. But can you still love them when they're up, even when you're not up? Can you still love them when they got a new job? Can you still love them when they got a new car, when they got a new house, and you still can't afford to make a house payment? Can you still love your neighbor even when they're doing better than you are? They got a boyfriend. They got a, they got a new wife. They got, they got everything. I love my neighbor. As myself, you want people to celebrate you one day, start celebrating other piece, some other people. You want people to help you complete your dreams, start helping uh, the dreams of other people in your life. Uh, if you want to put the dreams, if you have big dreams for big things in your life, start helping other people achieve their dreams. And in God's timing, he will help you achieve your dreams as well. Anybody believe that today? When I do this, I love my, someone else as myself. I, I, when I, when I'm, I see them, I'm trying to help them as if it's me. I feel what they feel. I love them. Love them. I give them everything. I'm reminded of Joseph. Joseph in the Bible, um, in the Old Testament, he was a man who had dreams. There was a time when he was locked up in prison for two years where there was a cupbearer that forgot about him. He helped out the cupbearer, helped him fulfill his dream. And, he had, and Joseph had his own dream, but they forgot about him. But Joseph didn't care. He still helped the cupbearer fulfill his dream to get back into the palace and help him interpret what his dream that he needed to and help him get in, knowing full well they had his dream, but he set his dream aside, and they forgot about him. Would you still love people, and would you still help people and fulfill their dreams, even if they forgot about you? Even if you help people get to the place where, man, they get to, 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 to see the, the fruit of their labor, if you help people, and you serve people, and you love them so much, and you see them, and they completely forget about you, would you still love them, and would you still serve them, and would you still help them fulfill their dreams? That's a challenge for us. This is a challenge for us as a church. And this is what he's telling this, this scribe. Jesus is talking to him. He says, uh, I, this, this, love your neighbors and yourself. And then the scribe comes back to Jesus and he literally repeats what he says. He says, well said, teacher, verse 32. You are right in saying that God is one and there's no other but him. And this is the reality we are. We have one God and we love him. We give him all, everything we have. And we love him with all we have, with all our mind, soul, and strength. 
He says, you're right about that. To love him with all your heart, understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings, sacrifices. There's a passage in the Old Testament where, in Proverbs, where it says, obedience is better than sacrifice. We can demonstrate love. We can, we can have the biggest, we can buy the biggest thing. And, and I'll have the worship team get ready. We can buy the biggest toys and flowers and arrangements and bouquets and perfumes and gifts and cars. And we can show all the sacrifice and show money. But if at the end of the day, trust is lost. And the love of ourselves is greater than the love of someone else, it will show. Us as a church, if we apply this to our church, we can we can sacrifice and do all these big things, big demonstrations. But if at the end of the day we're not loving as a church and we're not displaying that character, it means nothing. I love my wife, she's beautiful. I'm a I'm way better right there. Love her. I can be showy as much possible. I can take her to the nicest restaurant. I could I, I could buy roses. I, I could buy I could buy everything. I mean we we can we can go all out. We can make a song. I can make a YouTube video. I mean we go crazy. I mean I we can go crazy and make this whole big demonstration and display. I I could I could dish out all the money. Put everything I have making the biggest giant Valentine's gift. But at the end of the day, if my pride is getting in the way, if I'm not, if I'm not truly loving with everything that I got, if I truly am not honoring her and her name and, and respecting her, what does it mean for everything I've given? It means nothing. And this is, the, this is the truth of today. He responds back, verse 34, says, when Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to them, you're not far from the kingdom of God. You're not far from the kingdom of God. Can I tell you, I don't want to be far from the kingdom of God. I want to be close to God's kingdom. I want to be close to his presence. I want to be close to his will. I want to be close to what God has for this church and what God is wanting to do in this church. Even though, men, men, we've been through a lot. We've been through COVID. Even when we've been through some stuff, we've been through Arctic winter blasts and moments and people have gotten sick. I want to be right in the will of God. I want to be right there. And I want to be like this guy. You got it. You've nailed it on the head. Love God. Love people. You put it into context, the last three passages below, you have Pharisees, Herodians, Sadducees, three different groups asking Jesus about taxes, money, asking about religious ceremonies, marriage and resurrection, legalism. But then this guy, the scribe, he gets it. The Pharisees, the religious leaders didn't get it, but this guy got it. All God needs is one person to get it, and he can change the world. All we need is one person. If only one family, if two families in our church understood what God is wanting to do, love God, love people, it will change the world. Love God. Love people, you're not far from the kingdom of God, and no one else asked them any more questions. Because that's it. That's all you need to know. Christianity is not complicated. Love God. Love people. If you're watching online, I want to give you an opportunity to love God today. And I want you to know that God loves you. And he cares about you. He died for you. If you have a prayer request, we want to pray for you right now. Send us a message. But everyone here today, I want to pray with you. I want to believe that God, God's love is ever clear and ever abundant in this room. And I want to experience God's love like never before. I can, I can watch any movie I want. I, I can watch anything on Netflix, on Amazon Prime, on Disney Plus. I can watch anything, any love story, any romantic movie, any romantic comedy. But none will compare to the love of God that is displayed in scriptures. 
Jesus said it himself to his disciples the night before he was crucified. There's no greater love than this, than when a man lays down his life for his friends. Every other story that people have written is just a mimic. It's just a copy of this true love story from God. How he loves us. Plain and simple, love God. Love people. Let's stand to our feet today. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for this church. For those watching from home. It's as simple as this. Yet we mess it up so much time. We got to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. I want to honor God with my body. With my mind. I want to honor God with my heart and soul. I want to love my friends. I want that love to just continue among my friends and love them and, and they love me. And you know what? And, and if I have a and if you're in here today and you have a spouse or a loved one. It's not just one or the other, it's together, both in harmony. 